Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. In this episode, we're gonna be solving a Physics 7a practice problem on the topic of modeling with kinetic and potential energies. As usual, if you're finding this content helpful, please make sure to leave a like. It really, really helps promote this channel. So this is the problem that we're gonna be working on today. It's a Big Bang Theory problem. Sheldon Cooper and his girlfriend, Amy, uh, for a faller are playing a game of bouncing balls. They each have a ball with a mass of two kilograms. Neglect air friction below. So part A, Sheldon releases his ball from a height of one meter above the floor. Each time the ball bounces, it loses five joules of energy, energy due to the interaction with the floor. Calculate the maximum height of the ball after two bounces. Draw an energy interaction diagram as your explanation. And then for part B, we have to figure out after how many interactions with the floor, the ball would no longer bounce back up. Draw an energy interaction diagram as your explanation. Okay, so as you can see, I have everything uh, written down over here. So we're just going to do part A and B, and then we're going to put the problem back on the screen for C. So basically, uh, we have Sheldon Cooper. And let's just make a little drawing because that kind of always helps. So we have, so this is the floor. The initial height. Is equal to one meter. So the ball is going to come down. It's going to bounce up. It's gonna lose 10 uh, joules of energy, uh, five joules of energy with each bounce. Then it's gonna come down again. And then it's gonna be over here. This height is what we're looking. This is bounce number two. And um, we've lost 10 joules of energy. We've lost 5 joules of energy to the environment. Okay, so now let's um, put up a physical system. Uh, energy interaction diagram, I'm sorry. So for our energy interaction diagram, We have the ball. Our initial is the ball at height one meter. The velocity is equal to zero because he just releases it. He doesn't really throw it. He's just releasing. And then the final, final is that the ball is at a height unknown. We're just gonna call it yf. And the velocity is also equal to zero because once the ball, you know, it goes up and then down, up, and then it stops and then goes down, up, stops, down. So the final velocity is also gonna be equal to zero. Is this open or closed? Well, in this case, the system is open because we're losing energy to the environment. So we're going to do open and because we're only interested on the first bounce and on the second bounce, 10 joules of energy went out, then going out. Now we don't really have a change in kinetic energy because the initial velocity and the final velocity are both equal to zero. So the only energy that is changing here in, is going to be our potential energy. So our potential energy gravitational is going down because the height went from the original height, which is one meter. Uh, our height went down. Our initial 
was equal to one meter. And then our final, we don't really know. So now we're gonna write the equation for this. On the left side of the equation, one term per bubble. In this case, we only have one term. So change of potential energy gravitational is equal to the left side. In this case, the energy is living. Because the energy is living, then that means negative. So negative 10 joules. If we um, put our equation here, mg delta h, so that would be mass, gravity, final minus initial, so final minus 1 is equal to negative 10, like this. Okay, so now we um, do... Oh yeah, we have the mass. The mass is two kilograms. Okay, so uh, this is equal to two kilograms times ten times um, J wife minus two kilograms times ten is equal to negative ten. So uh, this is negative twenty goes to their side as ten. So why final if we use our calculator? would be, so this is positive 10 divided by 20, so this is one half, so 0 0.5 meters, final answer. So this is 0 0.5 meters, so it's exactly in the middle. All right, so that was part A. Now, part B is asking after how many interactions with the floor, the ball will no longer bounce back up. Draw an energy interaction diagram as your explanation. Okay, uh, this one is kind of awkward because it's so easy. If it loses energy, if it loses the same amount of energy per bounce, this is a linear function and we're already halfway there at two bounces, then that must mean that at four bounces, we're not going to go back up. Um, however, I think that we have to, oh, we have to draw the energy interaction diagram. Okay, so we have to do it. All right. All right, if we have to do it, let's just go ahead and do it. So the energy interaction diagram is going to be the same. Um, so system, ball, initial, same circumstances. And then our final is going to be different because now we're going to be exactly on the floor. Um, so height is equal to zero and velocity is equal to zero. This system is open. But now I don't know exactly how many bounces it takes for the ball to reach zero. So what we're gonna do is this is gonna be going out and we lose five joules per number of bounces. So this is five joules times the number of bounces. So very important. Um, the number of bounces. This is what we're looking for. And in this case, uh, we are only losing, again, potential gravitational energy. But instead of having a final, the final is just going to be exactly zero. So let's just go ahead and put our equation. Uh, PE gravitational is equal to five times N. So MG final minus initial. So final is equal to zero minus initial is equal to one is equal to five times N. I'm trying to solve for N. So I'm just gonna send this to here. So mass is 2, G is 10, negative 1, 
Um, yeah, divided by five. So this, oh, this is negative. Yes, I had an extra negative. Yeah, negative. So that the entire thing is positive. Yeah, there we go. Is equal to four. Because this is 20, negative 20 divided by negative five is equal to positive four. This is negative because it's going out. So once you put it on your equation, you have to put the negative. I don't put the negative here or here because negative going out basically means going in. So that would, that would be like saying negative to the left. Well, negative to the left means going to the right. So you shouldn't really double do it over here because you are just flipping directions. But once you have your equation, then it is actually important to put it on the equation as a negative. All right, so four bounces. Now let's just go ahead and read part C. So part C says, Amy is standing in a room with a different, more sticky floor where the ball, uh, ball loses seven joules each time it bounces. She must release her ball from the same initial height of one meter. At what speed must Amy throw the ball up in order to achieve the same maximum height after two bounces as Sheldon's ball did in part A? Draw an energy interaction diagram as your explanation. All right, so some initial height, what speed? Okay, so let's just go ahead and do another drawing because that is really gonna help us out. So Sheldon released his ball from um, from his hand, so the initial velocity was equal to zero. However, Amy's floor is losing more energy. So let's just go ahead. So basically, let's just put the floor over here. So Amy has her ball and it's also gonna start at one meter. But Amy, oh, and also Amy wants her ball to come down, then up, first bounce, then down, and then up a second bounce. And the problem is saying us that Amy specifically wants that after two bounces, she should have the same height as Sheldon. So what Amy wants is for this to be 0 0.5, because that's the answer that we have over here. So that's what Amy wants. Now, what's the problem here? The problem is that Sheldon lost five joules of energy with each bounce. Amy is going to be losing seven. So if Amy does nothing, then this is not gonna be a ship because she is losing seven joules per bounce. So Amy is very smart and she knows that if instead of releasing this ball from rest, which is what Sheldon did, she releases it up with a certain initial velocity, then the ball is gonna go up and then down. And this extra energy is gonna make it so that by the end of the second bounce, she achieves the same height, even if she's losing more energy per bounce. So Amy basically knows that she's losing more energy. So Amy knows that she has to put in more energy into the system to achieve this. Okay, so now um, what are we gonna do? Well, let's just do a new energy interaction diagram. So the system, still the ball, initial, same as before, ball, um, height is equal to one meter. But with Sheldon, our initial velocity was equal to zero. And in this case, our initial velocity is, we don't know, that's what we're looking for. And our final is two bounces later, 
the ball should be at a height that she wants, which is 0 0.5 meters. And the velocity is going to be equal to zero because by the end of the bounce, you know, the ball goes up, stops, goes down. So this is the end of the bounce, so it's equal to zero. So now we're gonna draw her energy interaction diagram. This is two bounces on Amy's special sticky floor. So uh, we have 14 joules going out. So let's just go ahead and do the bubble. Oh, now we're gonna have two bubbles because the velocity is changing as well as the potential energy. So my bad, we're actually gonna have two bubbles. So both of them for the bubble. The um, potential energy is going down because the ball went from one meter to 0 0.5 meters and the kinetic energy of the ball is also going down because your initial velocity is what we're looking for, so we don't know, but we know that the final is equal to zero. So whatever it is, it went down. So now we write our equation, one term per bubble, and it all equals Q plus W. So delta P E gravitational plus delta kinetic energy is equal to negative 14. Again, negative because the arrow is going out. So this is uh, mg delta y plus one half m um, delta b squared is equal to negative 14. Mass is two, this is 10. And then final minus initial so this is negative 0 0.5, final minus initial, plus one half times two, and then final minus initial, so this is negative b i squared, is equal to negative 14. So at this point, we just have to solve for b i, Okay, so um, negative 10 minus bi squared is equal to negative 14. That means that if we just flip everything so that it's positive and send this to the other side of the equation, bi squared is equal to 4. Therefore, bi is equal to 2 meters per second. Final answer. So this is the velocity at which she needs to launch her ball upwards in, her, in order to achieve the same height as Sheldon, despite the fact that she's losing more energy per bounce. So this is the end of this practice problem. I hope that you guys have found it useful. Uh, as usual, please make sure to leave a like. It costs you nothing and it really helps promote this channel. If you have any questions, please make sure to leave them on the comments below and I will see you guys in the next video.